Hello everyone and welcome to your channel, your path from BDS to DMD or if you are a student who wants to get in dental school, welcome. Today we have a very special guest, special because uh, this person has a lot, a lot, a lot of importance in my life and he is one of the reasons I decided to do dentistry a second time. So please welcome Dr. Larry Dunham. He is Assistant Dean for Diversity, Equity, Inclusion and Belonging and Clinical Assistant Professor of General Dentistry at Boston University, Henry M. Goldman School of Dental Medicine. Dr. Dunham, so excited to see you. Good morning. Good morning to you, uh, Dr. Jasmine, and to our audience. I am so pleased to have this opportunity to always engage with Dr. Jasmine. I, I call her Dr. Jasmine, not Dr. Kikar. She just, <laughs> and that's just my affection I have for her. And I um, want to talk a little bit this morning about my background. I uh, graduated from this DMD program back in 1983. I'm in private practice and I've been actively involved and diversity work here at the school for the past eight years. And it's so rewarding for me to be a part of this school at this point. I really enjoy coming to work every day, even if I have a rough patch. I mean, we tend to support each other here in a way that is so unique. So that's my plug for the school. <laughs> but in terms of dentistry, I'm so glad that many of you are choosing dentistry as a path, for as a career path, because I think it's an excellent one whether you be male, female, or however you identify, you get a, a certain amount of autonomy with this profession and you can continuously grow. I feel like I'm a student at this, at this point in my career because I'm back at school, things are changing in ways that are so meaningful to this career that I'm in and that you're uh, a scribe to be a part of. Thank you so much, Dr. Dunham. So that's very kind of Dr. Dunham to call me Dr. Jasmine, but I'm his student and I he's my mentor for life. So I'll always be Jasmine for him. Uh, let me just share a quick story. Um, one of the reasons I decided to go back to school is because I saw a video of Dr. Dunham where he said, if he has to do dentistry all over again, he'll do it. And you know, that was my inspiration to go back to school after taking uh, you know, a clinical break for a lot of years. So Dr. Dunham, thank you so much. I I will always be indebted to you and I'll always bother you for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today we are going to address a few questions and Dr. Dunham has been uh, generous um, to give us this time. He has a extremely busy schedule. Uh, he'll be sharing with us a few things about uh, the admission process at BU whether you are a DMD student or an advanced standing student. Um, I know you have a lot of questions and so many of you have asked me this, that what is it that schools look for in a candidate? So um, let's start with something, uh, Dr. Dunham, a very broad overview of what is it that BU looks for in a student? Okay. What we look for uh someone with a very solid background in the biological sciences, okay, that's fundamental. But beyond that, we're really looking at the, um, the total picture of a person. We want someone that has um, the passion for the, the work that's required. You have the clinical ability to get the work done, but also we're looking for people that have a compassion for others. Okay, so when, we, when you talk about a holistic approach, we really do have that here at BU. And one of the things I wanna stress is how important your personal statement is because that allows all the folks that are on the committee to get a better sense of who you are beyond the stats right. that you have. So I implore you to, to be honest with yourself, get good mentorship each, each step along the way. When I say that people that you can trust to bounce ideas off of and really further um, develop who you are in the sense that you know why you're doing dentistry because I don't want people that are doing it for some other reason that's external. You have to be internally driven and we look for that. Yeah, that's that's very helpful, Dr. Dunham. And I feel this is where, uh, you know, it's a very important thing and for everyone out there, take this one message home from this video that BU looks at students in a very holistic approach. So they're looking at you as an overall eventual ambassador of BU that you're going to be. And as Dr. Dunham said, your uh, statement of purpose, your SOP, 
is very important. Um, and Dr. Dunham, I know um, we do get resumes um, and you know at school, but what is it that you you want to see in an SOP. I always tell my viewers that, you know, make your SOP as if it's your life story because that's the way you're conveying yourself. So it's a paper that's representing you in your absence. Okay. I'm glad you asked this question because one of the things I really do like to stress is that there's no template that I want anyone to follow in terms of a, a personal statement or SOP. This is a perfect time for you to explore honestly with for yourself why you're pursuing dentistry and your SOP should be unique to you because you are unique. Don't look for a template, but examine honestly why you want to do it, how you see yourself being the clinician or, you know, the practitioner that you want to be and express that. Any, any stories that are, any any experiences that have gotten you to this point where you're convinced that you want to do dentistry, include that. Don't make your personal statement too long. Three paragraphs are, I think, are enough. A little background on yourself, why, how you've gotten to this point where you are to apply, and then maybe what you hope to do with it. That's that's very helpful, Dr. Dunham. So to, to all my lovely viewers here, if you've seen my videos before, uh, this is something, you know, I actually chime with Dr. Dunham that please make your SOP very authentic, very genuine. And um, this is a way you're, you're communicating with uh, the committee that's reviewing your application. So it's absolutely okay to get help from family and friends in writing your SOP, but, but please make it authentic. You know, don't, don't have a professional write it for you because professors have a lot of experience and <laughs> they know when it is genuine and they know when it is fabricated. Um, so, you know, Dr. Dunham, that brings me to the next question that, uh, and this doesn't has to be an exacting number, but um, do you review a, a lot of applicants every year? We do. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I'm glad we have a committee that can help keep me in check because I don't want to take everyone in. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we do have, we have to be selective and I, and we get so many qualified applicants that I don't want anyone who doesn't get in maybe the first round or even the second round to take it personally. But um, because we do get so many applicants, we only have um, 117 spots for the DMB program and 80 to 85 for the advanced standing. And we can't take any more than that because then we would lose the capacity to treat. We want to make sure each student has a, a very complete experience. Right. So I think this is a good take home message that don't be disheartened if for some reason you do not hear from the school or don't get accepted. That does not mean that you're not the right candidate for the school. It just could be that uh, there were other candidates who were qualified, but, you know, please keep applying. Do, do, you, do you think, Dr. Dunham, that is, that is a good message? Because I've seen some students get very disheartened if they don't get accepted and then they suddenly feel they may not be the right candidates for the cohort for the school. Yeah, and that's what, that leads us into a tough area because I hate for anyone to feel demoralized. As I said earlier, there's so many qualified folks and unfortunately the numbers are what they are. We can only accept so many, that's the capacity. But I would also suggest as much as I want all of so many students to come here, look at all the options that are open to you and look at healthcare in a broad, in a broad way. I know if you want dentistry, you want dentistry. And, and if you want to be here, we would want you to be here. But that, if that doesn't happen, don't lose heart. You know, find another way to get your needs met. And I'm saying that to you early on, because even if you go through this program, there are going to be other obstacles down the road, and you're going to have to deal with those in a very constructive, balanced way. Definitely, definitely. So I think the key is stay positive, you know, and, and believe in yourself. I think if you, if you want to be a dentist, you will be a dentist. And, you know, if for some reason, so getting in school is just the first step. You know, there's, there's still a long path ahead of you. So <clears throat> Dr. Dunham, the next question uh, is, uh, how does a typical interview at BU look like? You know, what is it that the student should be prepared about? <laughs> Thank you. 
for asking that question because we don't have like a panel of interviewers. You will have a one-on-one -on -one interview at BU, which I think is very good. It gives you a chance to express yourself, I think, a little bit better than when you feel like you have your you're in the middle of an inquisition. You got, you know, three to six people, you know, in front of you, a panel sometimes. I agree. Okay. We we do have a group presentation. Um, right now with COVID, that's changed a little bit. So we're doing that um via Zoom. But your interview, even now, will be one-on-one -on -one in a Zoom setting. Yes. And presentations will be via Zoom. You'll be a little bit of a group there. So you can get a, you get um, some information about the school. But the one-on-one -on -one is the way we go. And I want you to think about that interview as not a, an interview in a traditional sense. I don't even usually call it an interview. I'll call it an interview conversation because that's what it should be. I want you to look at it as a conversation. It's an opportunity for you to talk about who you are, why you want dentistry. And you can, you can, you can push the interview or, or direct the interview conversation to, to some extent. Yes, I and I and everybody listening out there, I think this is something I dearly love about BU. Um, not only do you get a chance to meet with the professors, but you also, BU gives you this platform to ask a gazillion questions because, you know, at the end of the day, you are going to spend either two or four years at the school, depending on, you know, whether you're a DMD or advanced standing. And this is going to be your family for life. So, you know, thank you, Dr. Dunham. That's that's extremely helpful. I think that takes away a lot of pressure from <laughs> the candidates who are interviewing because interviews are stressful for candidates. It can be very stressful. And I, uh, but just to piggyback on what Dr. Jasmine just said, we look at, um, this is our academic home. And I want you to look at it in that same way because even folks who don't end up coming here, Many of us are still open, I'll, I'll speak for myself, to continue a, a conversation or, or be in touch with them because you're a colleague, you know, and that's the way we view it here. Thank you, Dr. Anam. So <clears throat> you did mention something uh, about the presentation, and this is a question which was asked that um, should students who mm -hmm. have a lot of uh, experience, uh, whether dental or otherwise, when um, especially for dental, you know, the ones who are coming on advanced standing, should they start documenting some of their cases and use that as, um, you know, because when, when I interviewed at BU, I had some students who came with a portfolio and, you know, the others who did not. So is that something which is a requisite or is that an additional if somebody wants? It's an additional if you choose. And your portfolio, if you do bring something to share, it doesn't necessarily have to be cases. I've had people bring some artwork to me, you know, and in, in the conversation, they could work that in and just show their dexterity through their artwork. And um, that's another plus. It gives you another another opportunity to, to learn about this applicant, what they really value outside of just clinical dentistry. You may not get an opportunity to share that por portfolio, but if it's something that's meaningful to you, you can bring it as an addition and maybe you can present it in your one-on-one. -on -one. Nice. That that's what makes me fall in love with BU all over again. <laughs> you know, I think, and as Dr. Dunham said, they're looking for candidates. Uh, so it's a holistic approach. So please don't uh, be disheartened by everything and anything that we are reading online these days. That it's only the GPA that matters, or it's only the DAT scores that matter, or it's just the thing. I think BU does look at everybody. Uh, you know, in a in a holistic way, like, you know, in like an entire, um, who are you as a person and, you know, whether this is a profession uh, for you. So um, Dr. Dunham, what does make a candidate's profile um, stronger? And, you know, it doesn't have to be a very specific answer, but like a very generic thing. If, um, what is it that they can do to make themselves uh, you know, like, like grow in the profession. One of the things I look for is the, a person who can persevere. And that's something that can come out in your personal statement. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm impressed with someone who's had stellar numbers throughout their career, but I'm also, I look at them with caution 
because I wonder what will happen when they do, you know, hit a, hit a wall, you know, have something, you know, that really they have to deal with and overcome. Students who can show that they've persevered and they're, and they're still standing strong and they, they, their convictions are, are very strong and they're, and they're pushing forward. That's quite meaningful to me because that's what we want in the profession. We want, that's a healthy choice. Yes. And I make healthy choices to get past obstacles. Right. How right. do you think? How do you how do you analyze? I look at the analytical process because I think as a clinician or or a healthcare provider, we have to be analytically objective or even about ourselves. And I like to see that person who can analyze things, kind of step outside of themselves, right. view everything completely, get back into themselves with, with purpose and mission to move forward. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Dr. Donna, what are um, some of the other programs that um, BU offers to candidates? Like I know there is a, a master's program and then there is a dental assisting program, then there is a preceptorship program. Uh, would you like to please uh, give some highlight on them? Okay, the, um, the master's program is an oral health science master's degree. And we do work closely with this, with the medical school. That class, that program is housed in the medical school, but students get a chance to interact and take classes in the dental school. And oftentimes I've advised students to take that master's program who I feel need to strengthen their science background. And then oftentimes they can be ushered in or matriculate into the dental school. Going back to the point that you made earlier, Dr. Jasmine, don't give up. There's so many different ways to get your needs met. And yes. that might be very good for some students. The preceptorships, those are things that are offered once students are in the school. They get a chance to go out into practices, whether they be community health centers or private practices. Yes. We do have a dental assisting program within the school. Some students come into that. Dr. Jasmine has actually worked with me in that program. And some of those students end up working for the school and then moving on to, to dental school when the time is right for them. Yeah, and I feel, <clears throat> I do like the master's program because I had, uh, you know, when I was in my advanced standing, I had some students in the DMD program who actually did the master's and uh, they said it, it, it helped them. It really helped them not only uh, to strategize and understand what their goals are, but it also gave them a very deep as well as a broad understanding of dentistry and oral health as related to the overall quality of life. Yes. You summed it up so beautifully. And another thing I want to piggyback on again on what you said, another thing that OHS program does, it puts you in an environment that you want to be in yes. hoping for life. And I think that's an important thing, creating a micro environment around yourself that's supportive of you, even when you're not consciously thinking about it. Take some, you know, be conscious about setting up that environment yes. and then you're being reinforced consciously and subconsciously. Definitely, definitely. And I think <clears throat> for the students who want to pursue uh, the DMD route, uh, the dental assisting program is something uh, which not only helps you understand uh, the subtleties and nuances of dentistry, but it also gives you a platform to, you know, get to know your professors. And, uh, you know, if, if for some reason, after the dental assisting program, you decide that, okay, you like dentistry, but may you know being a dmd may not be something you're looking at then you can always um get to the administrative route because i've worked with uh vps of big dental groups who started with as dental assistants and i've worked with uh, chief officers who you know went to the dental hygiene program and are running amazing dental hygiene uh, programs for big dental chains so I feel, as Dr. Dunham said, uh, these are small stepping stones and they definitely give you a platform to understand where you want to be. Um, so Dr. Dunham, um, we've spoken about the interview, we've spoken about the application, what students can do to strengthen their application. Um, so um, asking one question from uh, you know, the DMD as well as the advanced standing, uh, um, would you be kind uh, to share a little more about your diversity efforts at BU? Because I know, you know, that's something which is very dear to your heart and mine as well. Yes, yes when I, when I uh, think of diversity, I think of it 
in a broader sense than maybe some people think of it in. I don't think of it in strict, in strict terms of, of race, racial diversity. I think it in terms of um, human diversity. Uh, we have so many different cultures and countries represented here at the school. That's one of the reasons why I enjoy coming to work. I was getting cut off of diversity work before I even knew that diversity work would be available because of my acute curiosity about cultures. And that's a very big component of how we view diversity here at, the, at, at, um, at Henry M. Goldman School of Industry. We want you to be uniquely who you are, come with an open mind to learn about all the different you know, communities that you may be able to work with or work in. And I like the term of, um, I, oftentimes we use the term cultural dexterity. And I, when, I, when I use that term, I want you to, we want students to develop enough understanding about the different, the different cultures of the world that they become dexterous. Just the way we want you to have manual dexterity, we want you to have cultural dexterity. We want you to be able to move from one area to another with ease, not losing your identity, but being respectful of where you are at all times. Yeah, that. I know that is a topic which is dear to our hearts. And uh, Dr. Donham and I actually presented a poster a few years ago on understanding cultural diversity because uh, as Dr. Donham summed it beautifully that diversity is not just a, a one word. It's actually, um, I could say it's an entire book. It's an encyclopedia. You know, it's like diversity in background, diversity uh, in in ethnicity, diversity on who um, you know you you relate yourself as, you know, gender diversity, racial diversity, diversity in different backgrounds. Like you know, I've always seen, um, especially from the cohort in my class, there was a huge diversity. There were there were students who had a bachelor's degree in engineering. There were some who came from um, you know who had major in music, but then decided you know. To have, take another bachelor's, and I think that just makes the class beautiful. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more because we are all diverse, you know. Definitely, <laughs> and, Dr. Donald. <laughs> I'm glad that you expressed it the way you did, um, Dr. Jasmine, because it, what it does um, is it, it includes all of us. Because sometimes people hear the word diverse and they feel like that doesn't pertain to me because they have a concept of what diversity means. It means another group that's not represented, but it's all of us. <laughs> Yes, that is so true. I mean, it's 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 a difference in even the environmental background. So, so Dr. Donna, I grew up in India, and I think if you meet someone from the north, that person will be entirely diverse from someone in the south. And you know, so I feel that is the beauty of diversity. And you know, BU indeed is a melting pot. So you know, I I feel very proud to be you know an alumni of BU, and I I'm blessed that I <laughs> you were my inspiration to go to school. <laughs> And, and this is a heartfelt, um, joyful laugh I've given right now. I'm just so glad that you're still doing the kind of work that you're doing. And it just shows the, the reciprocal nature, nature of learning. You know, you feel that you've learned from me and I'm learning from you and I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Dunham. So I think to sum up what Dr. Dunham said is, um, A, BU is looking at your application very holistically. So please do not judge yourself based on what you're reading on social media because the people on social media are not the ones who are interviewing you um, second please do not be disheartened if you don't hear from not just be you but from any school see perseverance you know if you really want it you have to work hard and work smart towards your goal um, mm -hmm. think the fourth thing is uh, you know try to make yourself better than what you were yesterday. So don't compare yourself with an applicant who has a lot of experience because BU does have a diverse cohort. And I can say that from my own class that I was in, I had students with, in the advanced standing with 30, 40, at least I know one of them had 30 years of experience. And I also had classmates who had just graduated from dental school. And I think on the DMD program, there were some who worked as dental hygienists. There were some who had just graduated school, um, some who had taken the master's route. So I think, um, you know, and most important is the SOP, the statement of purpose, which Dr. Dunham said, please keep it authentic. Please keep it genuine. And um, 
you know, that is what this goal looks at. Uh, so Dr. Dunham, before we conclude, um, could you please be kind and um, share some pieces of advice for the applicants for this cycle and the upcoming cycle? I would suggest that you um, ties into what uh, Dr. Jasmine was, was just saying. You know, don't compare yourself to others. Do your best, and your best will continuously change. But it's important for you to be honest with yourself and track yourself. I'm a strong believer in journaling. I think we need to keep track of ourselves, and your journal should be something where you just kind of share, you know, thoughts with yourself. It can be a conversation with yourself. You know, maybe people that you meet, a slogan that you hear, write it down. And just because the way our minds work, the more we reinforce positive messages in our conscious and subconscious, we will automatically start to develop in ways that we want to want to be. And that's and that, and that takes me back to to where I want to start from. Kind of get a sense of where you want to be. If dentistry is what you want to, you know, is what you want in your life, find mentorship. Find people that can help you get to where you want. And be careful of the naysayers. You know, people who will doubt you and just really fuel the doubt that you may have in your own mind. Yes. So beware of that. Talk with people who have done what you want to do. Put that, draw on that as a, as a resource as you develop into the next step. Definitely. Thank you so much, Dr. Darnham, for all your time uh, and I really appreciate uh, the words of wisdom and you sharing your experience because I feel as Dr. Dunham said, stay positive, surround yourself with positive people because positivity attracts positivity. If for some reason there's someone who's, who's not so much in the positive mindset, instead of dwelling in their negative mindset, try to bring them on a positive mindset towards you. And I think that's the way we can make ourselves and the world around us a really lovely place to live. Thank you, Dr. Dunham. Thank you, Dr. Jasmine. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Until then, bye-bye. Bye-bye.